Hi, everybody. I'm Kirk Steerwalt, and uh, welcome to the show today. Uh, um, I'll tell you what, uh, it's uh, great to have you all tune in. And um, you know what, we're going to talk about some things today that I think are pretty important. And, and a lot of times trying to find that, uh, we call it the perfect animal, but I think, you know, it's kind of the perfect animal, like, you know, whatever you're looking for, because I think goals are important. So like I said, I'm Kirk Steerwalt, uh, Leedy, Oklahoma. Um, I've been a show chow ambassador or on a show ambassador now, I guess, uh, change. But uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me. So um, today we're uh, going to talk about uh, looking for the ideal steer. And, you know, I think that's a challenge because a lot of times, um, you know, it, it's fun stuff, though. I mean, it's one it's a it's a time of the year when. It always, you know, when my kids were showing out, it always made me nervous. I'll be honest with you. I mean, like, you know, because I didn't know what was out there and trying to figure out where we're going. And, and you know, in our situation, we sold what we raised and then bought what we showed. Uh, just that's kind of what we did. Um, but I'm going to say this. Um, it was one of them things that we had a budget. And I think, you know, just like everybody else. So, I mean, if you're raising them, you know, awesome. Um, if you're going and, and trying to shop and buy and, and purchase, you know, it, it, uh, you know, the way it was when my kids were showing uh, compared to now um, is a lot different naturally with uh, the, you know, with the social media and, and online sales and whatnot. So there is a lot of difference in there. So anyway, but I'm going to say this in looking for the, the steer that you're trying to, you know, look for, you know, I guess what I'd say is, is there's a couple things here starting off and, and then, you know, I'm going to say we're at the time of year, um, which I think is awfully good for this uh, Facebook live is um, um, we are, you know, the ones up North or in the Midwest are probably wrapping up on what they've got for the oncoming year. The ones in the Southern tier are probably, you know, we're, we're getting down to the last quarter, you know, where their shows were either, uh, you know, January, February, March. So we're kind of getting into the later stages of them. So anyway, and then they'll be shopping, of course, naturally starting in March or so on somewhere in there or, or before or after. So anyway, I'm going to say this. Um, one thing that I'd recommend on, on um, you know, purchasing a calf or looking for a calf or trying to find the perfect steer, you know, you know, if, if you're shopping, um, I'm going to say it's not, I mean, the biggest thing is it's not like going buying a puppy. Like we're just going to set out this weekend and we're going to go buy us a, a calf and, and it's got to be this weekend. Well, it's not that easy because, um, it's one of them things that you almost have to be patient, but also there's some urgency also too, because, you know, I mean, but I'm going to say this, that you can get wrapped up in a lot of different things, um, you know, especially if you're looking online and you're seeing all these prices and all these different calves and, and you know what, you can get kind of caught in the, to me in the, the whole, you know, thing that's going on there. But anyway, but for us, you know, I, I I'm going to say this, I'm, you know, when you're looking for a calf and I'm going to say, if it's a first year kid, I guess what I'd recommend is, um, first and foremost, it has to be gentle. I know we want quality. It has to have quality. But I mean, it has to have a good disposition because if you've got a calf that's going to scare a kid and they're not going to feel comfortable around it and, you know, three fourths of the time, you know, mom or dad or an older brother or sister got to kind of, man, you know, handle this steer for them and then they're just going to kick it in. It's really going to work a lot better if they can enjoy this animal and enjoy that steer heifer and, you know, what have that bonding. And to me, that's the, that's the, that's the part that sets the foundation for later years to come. So on those first year kids, um, no doubt is, um, disposition. I'm going to say when we're looking for a calf, um, you know, you're looking at, um, uh, you almost got to look at these cattle from the ground up. And I'm going to say, First and foremost, soundness is the number one issue in the show ring, but it's also one of the number one issues in just general cattle. I mean, uh, we need to have the right kind of angles. Uh, we need to have cattle that are functional from, um, you know, from every corner. And I think it not, it not only is in their feet, but it rises up if into their skeletal design. And I'm just saying is you might have something that's good in their feet, but you know, if they're straight in their hawk or it's getting even more higher up into their hip or into that shoulder, I'm just saying is these are things that probably are going to create some problems later on. So first and foremost, we need to have some foot size, 
We need to have the right kind of angles and we need to right, have the right kind of skeletal integrity or, or to me a design that you that will you will do to maintain movement and um, that's one thing you know and i'm going to say this you know we like those cattle to hit their track i'm going to say this um you know when you're watching these cattle walk i think it's important that you know they do you know the back foot goals in the front hole if it's off an inch do i hit the panic button i don't i mean you know what i mean but i you know what I sure don't want them to be knuckling up or pa- uh, popping in their pastern or just too steep in their ankles all the way around. So from there forward, I think, you know, um, this is going to be the basis that we have to kind of work from. And then we're going to go from there. You know, um, when we're looking for a calf, I think um, um, if you have, a, you know what, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture or, you know, what if you have time or you have access to, um, you know, asking the opinion of a breeder you know if there's their calf it might be out of a cow that that you know doesn't seem to miss or maybe she's a no-fail kind of female uh you know maybe it's one you know i'm just saying there's a lot of times you can find out some information but i'll tell you what I, these people that sell cattle or these breeders um i'm just saying is is you know what they want that calf to turn out for you i mean because it not only is good for you but it's it's also good for them and so to me um to be you know don't hesitate to try to get their opinion and, and, you know, try to get some direction out of you, especially if you're stumped. The other thing is a lot of times, and, and a lot of times it's not like this, but if you're, if you have access to cattle that you can go look at and then leave and then come back a lot of times, you know what, that second look, um, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, will make the decision for you. So um, to me, you know, I think, you know, the other thing is, is some cattle are thinner and greener. Some of them are fatter. And uh, you know what, it, it's, it all gets into the genetic makeup of these cattle. And, you know, some of them are, like I said, earlier blooming, some of them are later blooming. But I'm just saying, uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, if you've got a calf that's behind, whether it's it didn't wean well or its mom didn't milk good. I mean, a lot of times we got to get some feed in those cattle um, for 60 days just trying to get them caught up to where we can reevaluate. So um, there is, you know, there is cattle that what we call, you know, ugly ducklings or, um, you know, one diamonds in the rough would be another one. And so those are all, you know, things that can happen. And so to me, uh, I'm going to say when my kids were showing, we always, you know, we'd always have the calf that we kind of got on, but then we always had a project calf. And I'm tell you what, sometimes a project calf, you know, what turned out to be the best calf. And so, uh, you know, um, I like that. So anyway, um, some do's and don'ts, um, when you're going to pick up a calf, I would never, ever, if I can keep from it is, is go pick up a calf by itself. I think that's, uh, two things that I think that, that we see is, you know, a lot of times people will come get a calf by itself. I mean, it, you're taking it away from its environment and then you're, you're needing to, you know, take it home and then have it fall in. It's very, I mean, there, there's some risk there hauling the calf by itself in certain cases. The other thing is we'll have people come pick up cattle, but not much bedding in the trailer, believe it or not. And so to me, you know, those are a couple of things that a lot of times you can put a calf or two in the trailer, go get that calf, come back home and, and shoot. And, you know, um, the other thing is let it settle in. I'm just saying is so, um, you know, I'm going to say this, uh, when we look at, um, you know, the steer, I mean, I do like some shape in them. I like some muscle to them, it, but it's got to be the right kind of muscle. I mean, um, uh, I'm not, I mean, they don't have to be ginormous rear ended for me, but I got to have plenty. You know what I mean? I'm just saying is, uh, I'm to be honest with you, I, you know, when I'm looking for a steer, um, I'm looking for one that's more of a package deal. I like a lot of pieces coming together. I'm not really one to just jump into the, the single trait. Now I'm going to say this, there it seems like a lot of times when, you know, you're dealing with people and what they go get, a lot of times people go and overemphasize what they didn't have last year. I'm just saying is they had a steer that, you know, what for, you know, maybe it wasn't thick enough and uh, seems like the next year they'll go get a super stout one, or if it's one that's heavier fronted, then they'll go get one that, um, you know, is cleaner fronted. And so to me, that's kind of, um, that's it, but that's human nature i mean you know that's it we're all guilty of, of that so um one thing that i think um you know when you're looking at cattle I, I think it's important that um you know they're 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 balanced i think that's a 
Uh, one thing that I think uh, can be a key word is balance because everything's proportional. And I just think, um, you know, it's one of them things. And you know what, you know, what's your goal this year? I mean, um, I think you have to have a goal in mind because I almost think, um, you know, the rate of gain steer may be a little bit different than, you know, a steer that you're targeting for Kansas City or Denver or Louisville or, or Oklahoma City Congress or Fort Worth or whatever shows you got. I'm just saying I just do so few out there. But I'm just saying, you know, maybe though that goal is a little bit different. I think that not only gets in a little bit more different in your in your, you know, what you're looking for, but also in the way you feed these things and, you know, the way you manage them along the way. So, um, you know, there again, um, I'm going to say this on calves that, uh, if I could say something, you know, whether horned or pulled, um, you know, if they've got any buttons or any kind of scourge or whatnot on these young calves that you've got now, the guy needs to probably tend to that and get those took care of because those are just going to get worse. And, um, uh, now's a good time to get all that, uh, took care of i do think when you're you know you're looking for the perfect animal the other thing is um and and the one that you're an ideal animal that that fits your program i think one of the things that depth of body is something that you know when we look at you know volume just means full you know what i mean so that's 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 pretty easy to maintain or get uh sometimes when you're trying to make something deeper um that can take a while and so to me um, you know, I, I just think uh, today's game, you got to have these cattle have some depth of body. Um, to me, they got to be sound and functional on their feet and legs. Um, you know, um, like I said, they got to have some muscle and some shape and some top to them. Uh, but like I said, uh, all that comes together in one package. I think don't don't forget about the package deal. Now, the other thing is, is management. Um, when you combine um, good genetics and you combine it with good nutrition and, and management, that's when everything to me comes together um, the way you want it. And a lot of times what happens is you're going to have to change this up a lot of times along the way here. Um, I'm going to say one thing on the steers that I'd recommend in, in trying to maintain and develop that steer that you're wanting. Um, you're at some point and, you know, a lot of times you'll, you can feed them together early. I think that's fine for just a little bit, but then we're going to have to start separating th uh, these cattle and start focusing on what these cattle need. And, you know, some are going to need to be slowed down. Some are going to need to be sped up on their gains. Some are going to need to be, um, you know, a lot depends on how your math is. Some of them need to be deeper. Some of them are plenty deep. I'm just saying some are too fat. Some are too green. Some are getting pushed out of the way. Some of them are, are to me, uh, over aggressive at the trough. So to me, yeah, you have to separate them, okay? And the other thing is I think when you do that, uh, then you start focusing on what those cattle need. I do think you need to make sure that um, um, them cattle, uh, that you weigh those steers and that you, you start doing the math. You know, what's your target show? How many days do we have till that show? What kind of gain am I going to have to have to try to get to my target weight? You need to start on that because really, if you don't do that, you're feeding blind. And I'm just saying this. And, and to me, um, you know, I, and I'm going to say working on these cattle, um, the biggest thing that I can say on these uh, getting ready for a show is, you know, these cattle need to know their job. And, uh, um, you know what, with it, with the pandemic going on and, and all that, there, there should have been no excuse for an unbroke calf this year. I mean, that's one thing that, um, you know what, people had more time. And, and you know what, cattle look good too, man. You've seen some pretty nice cattle around the country. And you know what, they had them in good shape. And I've seen people that maybe hadn't, been doing that great do a whole lot better and so to me that's that was fun for this year for me so that that's a that's an upbeat positive thing that to me i could come out of this year um one thing that i think um you know when you're trying to train these things um i think right now um it's important that you uh keep an eye on your skin and your hair um uh, you know you're looking for lice ringworm uh different things like that your worming protocol you know, those all go into place right now. I mean, I'm just saying a lot of time when we get into these, um, um, these winter, late fall, winter, early spring, a lot of times we have a lot of different, um, ups and downs with your temperatures. And so a lot of times you'll, you'll have winter lice and, and, you know, I mean, and different things like that brewing or skin changes. And, and you know, what I'm saying is, so keep an eye on that through the, through these months here. I think that's, um, pretty important. But the thing that I wanted to kind of talk about is, is, 
in the show ring and getting ready for the show, there's a lot of, to me, there's a lot of kids in there that know what they're supposed to be doing as far as leading and setting them up and all that kind of stuff. But the problem is um, a lot of times they're leading calves that maybe don't know that so as well. So uh, it's important that you teach your calf to walk into it. You're going to start that now. I think that gets into that where that, you know, you get that look that you want. And a lot of times you can kind of change that look, you know what I mean? So um, try some different stances. Everybody's got a cell phone. We take lots of, and that's one thing that I'd recommend on your management of your animal. Take a picture of that calf once a month. And to me, I think that that will help you. A lot of times, you know, hey, is there such a thing as barn blind? Sure there is. I mean, we all can get it. And I'm just saying is so I think this keeps it in check. You know, if you're feeding for maybe you've got a steer that you got and it's not deep enough. I mean, you know what? Um, you know, and you're trying to get depth. You're thinking, man, you know, this calf, I don't know if it's getting deep enough. But a lot of times we can look at these pictures and, hey, you know what? I think we're gaining here. Let's stay with the same program. So to me, um, like I said, um, you know, the I'm a clipping and fitting guy. I mean, that's that's uh, you know, that's true to my heart. But I mean, to get there, we got to have an ideal calf. We've got to have nutrition, the proper nutrition, and then we have to have management. And to me, the biggest word that I could say for you in all that to try to get the perfect animal is. Uh, you need to be consistent. So try to maintain that program um, along the way and try to be very consistent with it. I think that that does a lot here. So, um, you know, and I think, you know, getting ready for a show, I think it's one of them things that um, when you know where you're headed with these things and you know how much time you got to do this much, uh, you know, I, I think that that's that gets into your whole management. So, um, like I said, um, trying to, you know, trying to find that calf that's that's you know ideal and perfect you know what i mean that's what we called it here and um you know what uh, you know what i i don't know if you buy a champion but i think you manage one into a champion that's what i think so anyway so uh, i want to touch here a little bit on um uh, before we close here um i want to touch a little bit on um the graphics that they uh, did for the ideal steer and perfect steer because it was quite a project um, you know, it was one of them things that when they asked me to do it, and, and I'm going to be say this right off the bat. I mean, is that one perfect or is that one flawless or whatever? No, nah, I don't know about that, but it's pretty, pretty good for the situations we were working in because we were actually, um, you know, I was communicating with people overseas, um, and, and, you know, we were sharing the screen and, and I'm talking about, you know, a, you know, a couple guys here or three or whatever that. Um, I've never don't even know anything about the show cattle world and like so terminology's out the window right and I mean you literally so you can't use like crest or uh, loin or you know tailhead or anything like that and, you know it got to literally where I'd be drawing an arrow on the screen and I'd be like try to make that flatter or bigger or taller or round two round now flatten it I mean it was uh it was a lot of fun and it was a challenge it was a it was a it was pretty neat, but it, you know, like I said, that was, uh, um, it was fun to see that transformation transformation from like the drawing to, uh, to an actual animal and then, then going the 360 and, and all this kind of stuff. And then kind of having it look like clay and then all of a sudden putting hair on it. And, and I don't know, it was, it was wild. You know, I, I mean, I'm not a tech guy. I have a phone. I do a lot on my phone, but that, that pretty well gets me to the end of it. But you know what? That was a fun project, and I think it's awesome. Um, there's more to come on that. And um, you know what? It was, it was fun. Um, like I said, um, I called them two guys. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, I don't know where they were at. They were, all I know, they're Dutch or whatever. But I, I had fun with them Dutch boys a lot, so uh, trying to do this. So that was that was fun for me, and I hope it was fun for them. It was, it was like I said, it was a neat, neat uh, project. So. Uh, you know what? So I think, um, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, Perina and, and, and to me, uh, like I said, I've been an ambassador for them for, um, uh, 18 years going on, coming on 19. Um, it, you know what? It, it was, uh, it's one of the, I love this company. I, I, they make great products. It's backed by research and they have, you know, they have super programs, uh, for the show industry. And the thing about it is they make some great, um, feeds, 
but and also some great supplements and to me uh, um, you know like i said we start with a good animal but then we start tweaking on them with feed and supplements and then all of a sudden um, we make them a lot better and so that's that's the fun part that's actually the fun fun part because there is such a thing as fitting with feed and you know what you can change one and that when you get to see that happen or you know or even make one better i mean i'm just saying is it, it's a lot of fun to to be able to see that and do that so it's something that i enjoy a lot the other thing is is i, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today um you know i want to touch on just before we get um you know gone here i'm not going to keep you all day here by no means but you know what um, we've had a lot thrown at us this year 2020 um yeah i mean um it's probably been a very unusual year and it'll be a year that you'll never forget. I'd always admire them people that be like, well, yeah, back in 1987 or 1972 or whatever, I'd be like, I don't even know how they remember that, right? Well, anyway, I think 2020 will be pretty easy to remember for everybody, not only because of the number, but, you know, what's happened in it. But I'm going to say this, you know, there's been a lot thrown at us and we've been knocked down a lot, quite a bit this year you know, different shows have canceled and this and that and all that. But I'm saying this, man, I, I tell you what, I'm as a proud of, if I'm proud of, the, of our industry as I've ever been, because you know what, we've had individuals, uh, we've had organizations, we've had breed um, you know, organizations, we've had different groups of people rise up and make alternative shows and different options for a lot of these um, shows that, you know, weren't able to happen. You know what? And, um, you know, at, you know, you back there, like March or whatever, when all that started, it was looking a little bit grim, but I'm telling you what, you know, I'm judging a show here in a couple of weeks and I've been judging shows in this fall. And, and, um, I'll tell you what, I know several kids that probably showed more this year, you know, than they ever have. And so I think that's awesome. And I, you know what, I, I'm, I'm glad to be, uh, affiliated with Prina and, and being able to, you know, they provide a lot of opportunity for a lot of people and uh, a lot of shows and do a lot of support for that so um you know what i'm i'm positive on what lies ahead and um you know what they might get us down once but i don't tell you what we're pretty good about jumping back up and not only brushing ourselves off but we're pretty good about brushing each other off too so anyway with that being said hey i hope everybody has a uh, great holiday uh, be safe out there um uh, remember uh like i said um, um treat them cattle I mean, keep an eye on them cattle um, as much as you can. And like I said, it's really not about um, anything more than managing. I think when you manage those cattle and you uh, tend to business, I think everything will start coming together for you. So with that being said, hey, um, I'm going to sign off here. Like I said, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Have a great holiday. I uh, wish everybody a, a great 2021. Uh, I'm excited for what lies ahead. Like I said, hope to see you at the shows. And like I said, appreciate everybody tuning in here today. Thank you.